Hey everybody, this is John. Um, today I'm going to show you how to build a barn door. They seem to be pretty popular today. Um, they're not really that hard to make. They can be quite expensive. Um, the one I've made, uh, I'm actually making two of them to span about an 85 inch gap or opening to a vanity. So I'm actually doing two doors and um, kind of show you what it looks like. So this is the door I finished. Kind of got some stained glass in it. A little bit of design. Uh, because this door is going into a opening that the other side is not really that critical. The back side doesn't really need to be finished. It's going to be stained and uh, clean up real good. Uh, so the back side is not really something everybody will be looking at. The front side will be facing the bedroom. The back side will actually be facing the vanity. So technically, the only way to look at the back side would be to open them and go into the vanity. And uh, which case they'd be open and the back side would be actually facing the wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this. And to give you an idea, we start off with some 3 quarter inch plywood. That's our base. These are all the tools you need. Square, some rulers, level, hammer tape measure, nail gun, some wood glue, router, reciprocating saw. Uh, got a circular saw in there to do a plunge cut to cut out the uh, where the stained glass goes. And a little table back there to uh, put stuff, some router bits. This bit will go around the edge and because the barn door on the bottom in this edge here you need to cut a slot so the door doesn't wobble as it moves back and forth there's a piece of angle iron that goes into the bottom that holds the door steady as you open and close it so this little dado bit will do that job for us I'm going to set up a little time elapse that does each section so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure down the middle because I need to make sure I got a reference where my middle is through the whole thing notice also if you have any writing on your um, plywood make sure the writing is facing what you're going to cover on the other door I don't know if you noticed the back side had the writing on it we're going to have to make sure we put quite a few coats of stain on there to cover that up because I don't want to I don't want anybody to have to see it but if you put it on the side that's going to be covered by the all the design then you won't have to worry about that you also need a saw preferably a compound miter saw which is what we have here uh, with a nice new blade because it hasn't been cutting very good and you're going to need you know the wood that you'll need to make the design this part right here is all fence panels so that's all i have here is some fence panels here they just cut it a 45 and put in to make that design so i'm going to uh first position some wood to draw out how i want the uh stained glass to go in make some measurements and then we'll we'll do this first section first Okay, so as you can see, we've got a little rough opening for where the stained glass is going to go. And we're going to back it with this little one by furring. But we're not going to do that yet because we've got to do a bunch of routing around the edges. So now we're going to go up and do the rest of this framework.
All right, so here we go. Got everything framed up. I'm gonna fill any cracks and nail holes with some wood putty. Uh, but the next thing we wanna do now is go ahead and route my edges. Cause I'm gonna be putting the next boards in the middle and then I have to put in the stained glass. So there's still a little more to do. So that's what this next section will be on is uh, routing all the edges and doing the plunge cut or the dado in the bottom of the door. Okay, so we now we got some nice clean edges to work with. Uh, I had to trim a little bit off of the edge here. I'm gonna have to sand it down just a little bit because stained glass, the uh, molding that goes in here has to sit flush for it to look good. See, that's nice and flush. I got just a little bit of an edge here I gotta sand down. And then I gotta sand down a little bit of edge here. So it sits nice and flush but the rest looks good so now I gotta flip it over put the back trim the little uh, I'm gonna sand it first but put the trim for where the stained glass goes and then cut that dado joint in the bottom Okay, so we got the back end done. Looks nice and clean. Set, got a nice half inch there for the stained glass to rest into. Everything's cut about a quarter, about an eighth of an inch larger because of the wood may expand. And this is the joint that I just cut. That's for that piece of angle line that will slide through there when the door uh, slides back and forth. You can see it's like right on this edge which is the same as that one so that both doors will be nice and uh, flush against each other I'm actually thinking about putting some trim along this edge here to cover up that kind of ugly plywood look some decorative edge kind of give it that look so now what I got to do is I got to flip it back over and then do the, uh, the fence picket so the fence panel portion Okay, so the next part we got to do is to fill these two panel areas with those fence panels. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to cut one. So, let me see if I can get one here. I'm going to take one fence panel. Cut it out of 45. And it would help if I could plug my saw in. Line up your first piece. Okay. 
Take it to this top edge, line it up just right, and then take a straight edge and do that. Mark that edge, and then take something like I usually use those uh, rollers to set up a jig and then cut a bunch of them. We'll do that next. Okay, now that I have all of the, most of the angles cut, what I'm going to do is uh, use a straight edge on all the edges that I need to trim, and then use the scraps to fill in what gaps I have left. And then uh, once I have them all in place, you don't want to nail anything yet. You want to make sure everything's nice and loose. Um, once you have everything in place, then you can go ahead and nail them in. And uh, I didn't I didn't use any glue on the old door. Don't really think I need glue on this one. I want them to move around a little bit and also leave just a little bit of gaps because they're going to expand and contract. When the air conditioning, when the cool and the heat of the house. But uh, let's go ahead and uh, get all these cut up. Okay, we're all nailed up. Everything's nice and nailed in place. I'm not really gonna, I don't worry about the nail holes on the um, fence panels. I'll sand those, I'll sand the top just a little bit because we still want to keep it rough. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It still wants to have that little rough look. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the stained glass in and put in the molding around that. Stain the st uh, stained glass is in. Just got to do some uh, filling up some nail holes with some putty. Fix a little trim in the corner there. I was a little short, so I had to kind of fill it, but I'll fill all the cracks with some wood putty. And uh, that's pretty much it. All you got to do now is get the track hardware, the uh, barn door hardware, stain it whatever color you want, and uh, hang it up. We'll uh, post some uh, video of, you know, when they get, uh, when I get them hung up to see uh, how they look when they're done.
Talk to you later.